region of Tyre and Sidon. He came through the midst of the region of the capitalists to the Sea of Galilee. Then they brought to him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears, and he spat. Look, somebody say, he spit. Oh, Lord. And touched his tongue. <laughs> then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Apophrata, that is, be open. Immediately his ears were open, and the impediment of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke plainly. Then he commanded them that they should tell no one, but the more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. I want to snatch our subject out of these last couple of verses and, and title this, I Gotta Tell Somebody. <laughs> I Gotta Tell somebody father bless these precious people for the next few moments god all who come those who are watching god we give you praise we give you honor and glory in jesus name amen you may take your seat in the lord's church god bless you i gotta tell somebody <clears throat> the process of hearing is important to our lives amen Hearing has a signature specialty that sets it apart from the other five senses. Hearing allows sound waves and frequencies to travel down the auditory canal to hit the eardrum, which vibrates and vibrations are set to three bones called ossicles, which are the smallest bones in the body. Amen. The ossicles amplify the vibrations and send the vibrations to these small hair-like cells in the ear called the cochlea. The cochlea. A friend of mine, he's an ear, nose, and throat man, doctor, so he helped me with this. And When it gets to the hair-like cells in the cochlea, the movement from those hair-like cells sends data to the brain. Amen. Through the auditory nerve. You don't have to remember none of this. I'm just painting a background for you. Therefore, the brain picks up those vibrations and identifies it as sound. Say sound. Amen. Simply put, beloved, your ears are biological microphones that cause you to hear the world around you. If you don't hear, the world is moving and you are not. It is one of the scenes in cinematography, which I majored in, and some of you should know that by now, uh, when everybody's moving a lot faster than one person filmed on the screen, but yet they're still standing still. If you cannot hear, you will miss warning signs. You'll miss information. The text teaches us, beloved, if you cannot hear, it does affect your ability to speak. At an early age, we learn vocabulary, say vocabulary, <clears throat> through hearing. We need to hear in order to speak. Any impediment in our hearing impairs our mobility and it impairs our messaging and our morale. Praise God. When we cannot socialize one with the other because we cannot hear, receive messages, nor give messages, it feels like the world is still moving around us and we're not. The issue of losing hearing varies, beloved. The most extreme version of hearing loss is deafness, say deafness, in which there is little to no hearing that impacts uh, your ability to even talk. Praise God. Simply put, ladies and gentlemen, hearing is important because the ability to speak begins with the ability to hear. If you and I cannot hear, if you do not hear, it affects how you talk, even if you talk at all. Are you following me? This man here in Mark chapter 7, who Mark, uh, the playwright of his day, the Tyler Perry of his day, uh, praise God, uh, records this particular event out of the four quartet gospels. He's brought to us 
rather they bring to us Jesus, uh, this man who has an extremity of hearing loss. Hearing loss. I know a little bit about this. I have several members of my family who are deaf. And we've had to learn some sign language to be able to properly communicate with them. They can read lips. And so they'll say, no, I don't want sign language. I want to read your lips. Amen. But the Bible says he's both deaf and dumb. He cannot hear and he cannot speak. The Bible calls him mute. Those who knew of his muteness that brought him to Jesus and at the onset of this story, it's an interesting context. Interesting context, beloved. They brought him to Jesus. Jesus pulls him aside, right? And they asked Jesus to put his hands on him. Jesus pulls him aside, sticks his fingers in his ears, spits, uh uh-oh, and then touches his tongue. Little baby in the back. He said, ooh. (laughs) And when he spit and touches his tongue, the Bible says his ears were open, right? And the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke plainly. I've never preached this text before, but there's a lot of good stuff in here. Now that lets us know that it's a high possibility that this man was not born deaf. Because uh, had he been born deaf, beloved, he would not have been able to speak at all. Text says he spoke plainly, which suggests, which, which suggests, Dr. Brock, praise God, that something happened in his life before Mark chapter 7 that has caused him, uh, Pastor Hewley, uh, to go into the prison of silence. That's what it really is to be deaf, ladies and gentlemen. It is to be caught in the prison of silence where you cannot hear what's going on around you, right? Neither can you contribute to what's going on around you. This man had something happen in his life to cause him to go into an unbroken state of silence. First and foremost, he can now hear himself talk and others can comprehend him and speak back with him, right? Then we are challenged at the close of this story with the perpetual, y'all going to love this, messianic secret. This ain't deep. Trust me, this ain't deep. Hey, Pastor Jefferson, he had to preach an engagement. Amen. Let's say amen for my brother. Amen. Amen. I know he preached the house down too. A perpetual messianic secret. All right. Jesus often worked miracles and told people to shut up about it. It's not deep. (laughs) And every time he told them to be quiet about it, they failed. Didn't pass the test, right? Maybe we often have these theories about the messianic secret of when Jesus tells us to be quiet and we don't pass the test, right? (laughs) Jesus told them to be quiet because he wanted to limit the rioting around him. He wanted to reduce the threat to his life because Jesus was the enemy of the state. The government didn't like him. They wanted to kill him. Jesus asked them to be quiet because he knew uh, because he knows something else was coming down the line. Amen. That was coming down the line that he had uh, nothing to do with. Praise God. The immediate moment, but with the overall big picture. Look at somebody and say, I got to tell somebody. I don't believe I could pass that test. Maybe you could pass the test. If you've been deaf all your life, Jesus comes and heals you. Don't y'all say nothing. That would be really hard. Hey, man, I would be inclined to let somebody say, uh, 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 know about it, rather. Maybe you would pass, but I don't think I could. But it would be hard for me to have been brought out of silence and then told not to say nothing. Now that's the story. Let me back up and share with us some pertinent things out of this text 
and we'll extract out of this text as disciplined as I can, as I know I have some scholars among me, and I don't want them to get me, amen. <laughs> as disciplined as I can be to stay within the text, praise God. God is saying something to us, and then we'll all go home and eat some chicken together. How about that? They say if there's going to be one bird in heaven, it's going to be the chicken, right? It's the gospel bird, right? <laughs> Some of you, it's in the book, though. It is. It, it is in the book. Some of y'all get that on the way home, too. Y'all too deep for me. Church, sometimes when you study a story, you can't study the story out of its context. If you study it within itself, you may grasp it, but you'll miss a bigger picture. So come with me in the context of the story of Mark chapter 7. This story shows us the power of context, not just the text itself, but, but what's behind it and what's in front of the story. What's in front of it? Mark chapter 7, Mark's theme and thesis of his gospel is to present Jesus as the son of man. Say son of man. Or the servant of mankind who works this litany of miracles, meaning many. The most miraculous content of the quartet gospels are tucked away here in Mark's gospel. Mark is like a kid in a candy store. You ever been in a candy store? You just see all the candy you want it all? Yeah, he's like that. He's so excited that he likes to draw you into the text, right? Old 1611 A.D. Uh, uh, Bibles that many of us still have, right? The, 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 the old English draws you straight into there straightway immediately intrinsically all those kinds of things mark wanted to paint a picture to interest you and i to keep you on the edge of your seat to bless you amen so this uh mark bypasses all the genealogy he don't care nothing about none of that and he gets right to the story the nitty-gritty so this particular account is exclusive to mark's account in mark 7 here's why Verses 1 through 16 of Mark chapter 7, Jesus now, he's challenged by the scribes and the Pharisees of this issue of the sanitation of the disciples. The sanitation of the disciples. Their problem was they were struggling with the disciples while they were eating without washing their hands. Remember that? And Jesus responds telling them that the real issue is not sanitation, but tradition, say that with me, tradition. You're struggling with what's happening because you're raising issues of something small or minute, guys. Y'all stop it. The real problem is you're trying to count on the word of God with your tradition. At the close of Jesus' discourse with the scribes and Pharisees, Jesus says, he who has ears to hear, let him what? You know the word. Verses 7 through 23, Jesus is now having a private discourse with his disciples because they're struggling to understand him. He's getting on them now. He's starting to get on them like, look, y'all, look. I called you to follow me. Why aren't you getting this? Amen. Why aren't you comprehending? They had to go into a private place to hear him teach verse 24 Deacon Crawford through 30 is Mark's account with the Syrophoenician woman who has a daughter who is demon possessed remember that verses 24 and 25 says the only reason she came out the coast to find Jesus was she heard of him now at the close of this chapter Jesus you get this y'all got this Jesus now encounters a man who can't hear you, you got this. Y'all got this. Yeah, let me try one more again. First 16 verses conclude, he who has ears to hear, let him what? Hear. All right. Next account records the disciples having to what? Hear Jesus privately. Y'all got this. Next account records Jesus exercising a demon out of the woman's daughter because she what? heard of him now at the close of this chapter we're now dealing with the man who has no what hearing ladies and gentlemen the, the entire chapter is about hearing are we getting this it's a beautiful conclusion pastor jackson that the entire chapter is about hearing that it closes with a person not hearing mm-hmm 
Dixon, when, when, when God sees you and I in situations, when you and I have the inability not to hear him, guess what he does for us? He will schedule a meeting with your deafness. Oh, my God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. You catch that, Pastor Hall. You got that mother. Yeah, he'll schedule a meeting with us. He will orchestrate life that even those around you and I who have heard of Jesus know how to walk you to him when you can't get to him yourself. First point of this story, and I'm hurrying on, is in verse 32. And they brought a man in the context of being driven by hearing who can't hear. He's struggling with what? Deafness. Right. He can't hear. Him. And they want, they want Jesus now to put his hands on it. I'll try that one more time. Brought a deaf man, dumb man, can't speak to Jesus. Want Jesus to put his hands on it. Ladies and gentlemen, here's where I was blessed during the study of this message. They bring a man to Jesus, right? Who's deaf and mute, which means he's struggling with the extremity of hearing loss, Dr. Scott. Right? No, no hearing loss. He's hearing loss. That means not only can he not hear Jesus, he can't hear the folks who brought it. Got this? But they're calling on Jesus at a time when the man can't hear him. He can't hear them. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll try it once, once more because I don't think we got that. Miracle gets initiated, right? Because he's got some people in his life who call on Jesus when he can't hear them. You follow me? Let me break it way down. You are where you are because some people called on Jesus when you didn't listen to them. I know I am. Yesterday would be six years uh, 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 we celebrated my mother's home going. She went home to be with the Lord. But there were some times in my life, y'all, uh, I didn't always listen to mama. Maybe some of y'all always listen to mama. You ain't never, you know, deviated. Maybe y'all got it all together. You ain't, come on, y'all. But there were some times, y'all, I ain't always listen to mama. Because I felt like I knew the best way to go. You ain't in no touch with my generation. You don't know the pressures we deal with. And I think I can decide and do it better. Wrong. <laughs> I was wrong, y'all. Have y'all ever been there? Don't leave me out there by myself, y'all. Yeah, because sometimes I be, I be preaching and I be looking at them. Uh, uh, Pastor Hughley, Dr. Brock, I be like, uh, uh oh, I think I'm out here by myself. <laughs> Hey man, look at somebody say, I got to tell somebody. Oh yeah, I've been there, y'all. I've been there. These folks call on Jesus on your behalf during times you and I didn't listen to them. I know my mama. Yes, God. You are not where you are in life because of you. Y'all need to say that again. Somebody somewhere was on their knees praying for you. They may or may not have even known you, but somebody prayed for you. You know the old song by Dorothy Norwood. Somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. I know my Jesus prayed for me. Had me on his mind. Took the time and prayed for me. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost have folks in my life like most of you who are prayer warriors this is all about intercessory prayer say intercessory prayer they intercede for me pastor jackson call on us man we can pray there's gonna be some times you may need us we can help you man we'll walk with you praise god amen the invitation is there for you praise god uh but these same folks taught me how to intercede and bless you as well as I, I have been blessed to watch for your souls uh, these almost little under two years now. But text says they took him to Jesus, right? Called Jesus on his behalf. Praise God. At a time, he couldn't hear them praying for him. Y'all have read this before? This is an interesting text. That's the power of intercessory prayer. Amen. 
I didn't always live saved in high school, but my parents seemed like the most saved folks in the world. And I would go to them, look, I need y'all to pray for me. I got an exam. I got this going on. And God would do it. Now, I wasn't always living for the Lord, y'all. Y'all know how we do. We'll, we'll uh, 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 go up to the altar almost every other Sunday or so. Call ourselves getting saved again. Oh, okay, that was just my experience. Yeah, that was me. But I thank God for praying parents who taught me something about prayer. Amen. Amen. Prayer works. Look, somebody say prayer works. Prayer works. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yeah. Praise God. Texas also tells to teach us the power of an independent process. Number two. Amen. Look here. They took the man to Jesus, and when they took him to Jesus, they were specific. Say specific. They, they said, Jesus, uh, we want you to put your hands on it. This is what we want you to do. Please put your hands on this man. Let me try it again. Took the man to Jesus. They took him. They were specific. They said, Jesus, we want you to put your hands on it. Translate it. We want you to do something with him that's familiar to us. Something we used to seeing. Something we used to doing. Are you with me right there? Am I helping you? Am I blessing you today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we want you to do. Maybe they asked him to put his hands on him because they heard what happened in Mark chapter 1, verse 31. When Peter's mother-in-law was sick, Jesus put his hands on her and her fever left. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe they heard what happened in Mark chapter 5 when Jesus went to the chaplain assistant's house named Jairus, who was the keeper of the church, whose daughter just died, walked into the room. She just died. Bible says in verse 41, he took her by the hand, raised her up and said, Talitha Kumai, and she came back to life. Maybe they heard what happened in Mark chapter 6 when Jesus was in the desert trying to feed people, trying to come up with a delicatessen in the desert with two fish and five very small sized barley loaves that could fit in your hand of bread. They put those five loaves of bread and two fish in front of Jesus' hands. He turns them into a desert, uh, from, a de uh, uh, from a desert to a, uh, to a uh, full buffet. Ladies and gentlemen, maybe they're asking this because there's been some record when Jesus put his hands on it. You're going to eat, you're going to come alive, and your sickness is going to go away. Are you catching a revelation right here? Are you catching that right there? You going to eat, you going to come alive, and you ain't going to be sick no more. When Jesus is in the house, y'all, sickness eradicates. When Jesus is in the house, you don't feel no more hunger no more. You ain't thirsting for stuff you don't need. When Jesus is in the house, he makes you whole again. God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Thank you, Jesus. But God, beloved, has no standard operating procedures. No, 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 no. The first thing we learn about miracles is the way he works things out for one person may not be uh, the same way for somebody else. Talk to me, somebody. So he says, y'all want me to put my hands on it? That's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my fingers in his ears. I'm going to spit. I'm going to spit. <sighs> I'm going to spit. I didn't say it. It's in the book. You read the same Bible I got? Yeah. I'm going to spit, Dixon. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to spit. Mm-hmm. Touch his tongue. Because I don't want y'all to have no control over how I'm going to handle what I'm going to do. I don't need you to put a standard process on how I deal with folks. Because the way I heal, that's not the only way I heal. What I do for one, I'm not going to do the same for another person. Is anybody glad he can't be copied? What he does in your life is based on your own personal testimony of what God can do. 
I feel God in the place. Jesus says to us here, beloved, I'm hurrying. So here's what I'm going to do. I need to send you a lesson. That when you bring somebody to me, don't tell me how to handle them. <laughs> you make the petition, I'll handle the process. You take it to God and God will handle it from there. I will take care of it. Don't you worry about it. It's in my hands now. I don't know who that word is for. But he's in full control of the processes of your life. You just make the petition and God will do the rest. Watch this, beloved. The way I'm going to heal you, you ain't even smart enough for me to ask you. Uh, uh, ask me why I'm going to do it. But I'm going to do it anyway. You catching this, aren't you? Sister Hope, but get this now. Man is deaf. Man, he, he deaf. That's how we used to talk in the 80s, 70s, 80s. Oh, that's deaf. Meaning that's real good. Y'all remember that? But, but, but not, not real good, but he's really deaf. You know that's how we talk. But he's deaf. Right? <laughs> Y'all funny. First thing Jesus did was what? Put his fingers. Oh, Lord. Mm. You ever be sleeping somebody mess with you like that? You did that. I know you did. To your siblings. Yeah. They used to mess with me like that. I was the middle kid. So the boy, they messed with me. First thing Jesus did was put his fingers in, right, in his ears. I have a few deaf relatives. You don't want to do nothing like that. Ooh, I got beat down by my older cousin over that. I was 11 years old. I ain't never do that again. I was just playing. Don't you, you know, she signed, don't you play like that. Last thing you want to do, you can just see that, can't you, Dick Crawford? Last thing you want to do is put your fingers in the ears of a deaf person. They will fight you. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I learned. Learn from me. Don't do it. Sometimes God works to cure by making it complicated. Oh, Lord. Sometimes God is getting ready to heal you by making sure the worst thing happens first. And your blessing is on the other side. Oh, my God. Somebody can relate to that. You go through the worst. And your blessing is waiting in the wings. Worst thing you can do is, is put your fingers in his ears because uh, he's agitated. He can't hear. He has no control. If, if times have gotten bad for you, something is good that's on the other side waiting for you. Somebody needs to be encouraged, but you're so close to your breakthrough so that you're, 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 you're at the close of the worst and the best is on the other side. But the text says he put his fingers in his ear, touched his tongue. And in between that, it says, y'all can say these words with me. And he spit. Say it with me. Say it again. Y'all going to remember this today. What you get out of church today? And he spit. <laughs> I ain't got nothing else, but and he spit. What? Who? Jesus? Yeah, where? I want to see that. Hey, Amen. Oh, yeah, but it says, and he spit, and uh, I, 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 I don't want to get ticketed. Um, I know we got some other theologians in the room, doctors, Brock, for eisegesis. We know what that is. We, we know what that is. That's illegal preaching. That's putting something in the Bible that ain't there. Y'all know how folk do. And some of us came up in denominations, folk make stuff up and misinterpret the God uh, and misinterpret the word uh, for something God never intended for it to be. Y'all talk to me, somebody on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 when you 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 say something in the text that's not there, that's incorrect preaching and teaching. But so so we we can't say Jesus spit on the man, right? Because that ain't what the text said. Text says what? And he spit. Two different things. And he what? Don't say he spit on him, does it? No. Don't say he spit on the ground, does it? No. Don't say he spit on his tongue. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Bible says, and he spit. <laughs> and he spit was symbolic of Dixon's praise God that the man's life was about to change. 
Because Jesus was releasing something of himself out of himself. Oh, God. He was releasing something of himself out of himself. That's the same thing that happened with the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus said, somebody touch me. Didn't he say that? And when he looked around, virtue has left out of me. When virtue left out of him, a miracle happened. When God is releasing something out of himself, guess what he does? Something miraculous is about to happen in your life. Maybe God's glory is being released. Maybe God's anointing is being released. Maybe God's favor is being released in your life. Maybe God's power is being released in your life. But something is about to happen for you. And he spent, text says, in his tongue was loosed. Lord Jesus, he touched his ears, right? Touched his tongue. Translated, the man got healed because Jesus released something out of himself and touched everything that was wrong with him, Mother Crawford. Touched his tongue, touched his ears. He's both deaf and dumb. Lord, have mercy. His inability to hear affects his ability to speak. And now we figure out, sometimes we don't figure out what's wrong until it gets right. Oh, okay, somebody missed that. Sometimes we don't figure out what's wrong until it gets right. Oh, that's what was wrong. You ever do that? After the miracle, we found out what's wrong with him. Because the text says uh, that the string of his tongue was loosed. Greek entomology of this text, that word string is the word desmon. Desmon, which means a band or a shackle of a prisoner. The band or shackle of a prisoner. Jesus says the reason why you can't hear talk, because you've been shackled on the inside. Jesus. I'm really about to close now. Something got you bound on the inside that has shut you off on the outside. Lord, I hear you speaking right now. Woo! Some of you are in, are in the silence of abuse. Some of you are in the silence of being heartbroken. Some of you are in the silence of being disappointed. Some of you are even in the silence of what's happened in your past. Some of you are in the silence of what somebody said about you that's hindering you from going forth in God in the church. Somebody's in the silence of depression. Somebody's in the silence of church hurt. Somebody's in the silence from withdrawing from people because you, 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 you want to just be shut off from the whole world around you. But the word of the Lord today is that when I touch you, this time you're going to be open. You can now react to the world around you. A bad dilemma in the body of Christ is we want folks to be spiritual on the outside, but they're bound on the inside. They're suffering on the inside. They're hurt on the inside. Don't know what to think. Don't know what to do. Don't know who to turn to. Don't know what to feel. Don't know how to feel. Don't even know how to interpret the Bible. Don't even understand how to put the words together. Don't know how to witness. Don't even know how to pray sometimes but I'm bound on the inside I need Jesus to spit and touch me God I feel you in the place mm -hmm. we want to act like since folks appear spiritual they ain't dealing with no problems on the inside we want to act like since folks appear spiritual they ain't dealing with no problems on the inside y'all but the devil is a liar y'all God has a way of letting folk know that somebody's going through something. Somebody can see in the spirit and can pray for you. That's what intercessory prayer is all about. Not seeing something and saying, oh, I see something in her. Oh, I see something in her. Oh! Don't gloat in what God shows you. Pray for them. Touch two people say, I need to pray for them. I need to pray for them. Mm -hmm, that's what I got to do. Mm -hmm, but I got to tell somebody, y'all. Some folks ain't said nothing this whole service. It ain't because they're spiritual. It's because they're tied up on the inside. It won't let you open up your mouth to hear the word of God. Word of God breaks the tie. 
Jesus said a prophetess. That is, be open. Text, te don't te text uh, teaches us it don't matter how deaf you are to the world around you. Oh, no, but there is no shackle that the word of God can't break. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This time when he heard Jesus speak to him, the voice of the Lord broke through the wall of his deafness. That voice that says, let there be, and it was. That voice that spoke to the grass on the ground and the sky in the air and humanity. It was that voice that spoke to the big fish to save Jonah. It was that voice that spoke to the cedars of Lebanon. And it was that voice that thunders across the world. Hallelujah. That voice that spoke to Lazarus after being dead for four days. Come forth. It was that voice that spoke to the fish. Put the money in the mouth so the disciples could pay their taxes. That voice that spoke to Saul on his way to Damascus. That voice that speaks to you in dreams and visions, your word, your situations, your family members. It was that voice nobody can defeat. That voice of the Lord will heal you of your broken heart, heal you of the sadness, heal you of the disappointment, heal you from your pain, heal you, open some doors for you, set your feet on right, set your new, make your whole new person. Why? It was that voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Voice of the Lord breaks through the hardness of man. No matter how deaf you are, when he speaks, you speak. When he speaks and breaks through the unbroken silence of your life, now you can speak. Some of you have been hurting on the inside, trying to interact with the world. You've been messed up. Oh, but God says you have no need to be frustrated no need to agonize hallelujah oh i'm so reminded I'm so reminded of the old song oh my jesus god said put it in my hands let me handle it i will take care of it i will handle it be not dismayed but whatever be tired god will somebody say god will god will god will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide. God will. Mm. Whoa, I feel this thing. God will take care of you. I got to tell somebody when he speaks, breaks through the unbroken silence of your life. Mm. Whoa, I feel this thing in the Holy Ghost. God will take care of you. Everyone standing. Who this thing's messing me up? Mm. God will take care of you. Somebody say, I gotta tell somebody. <laughs>